Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to be starting the, la the rule report here pretty soon. We're going to wait for more participants to join. Um, also, my coworker Vicky Espinosa will be in the chat answering any questions uh, that you may have. We're going to talk today about the cottage law. Um, we're going to start here pretty soon. We're going to give a couple more minutes for people to join, and then we will get started. Good morning, everybody. Again, we're going to be starting here pretty soon. Um, just give you a couple housekeeping uh, rules. Uh, let me know where you're here. Drop a hello in the chat box and we will say hi back to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please submit them in the chat box at this, um, while the presentation is going on. We will try to cover them uh, and talk and discuss those questions as we are live. Uh, if you would like to learn more, you can always go to CFRA.org uh, and see some of the stuff that we're working on, uh, some of our content, and some of our training. Uh, like I said, we're going to get started here in a few minutes. We're going to discuss the cottage law, um, and we're going to be happy to answer any questions you may have. And like I said, we're going to start here in a minute, uh, just allowing more people to join, so that way we can get started. We're going to start here in a minute, uh, just allowing more people. And we're going to start with the presentation. Again, uh, if you're joining us, uh, you, you want to say hello to us, uh, please drop in hello in the chat box. If you have any questions at any time, uh, you can share them in the chat box. We're going to get to them as fast as we can. Again, if you want to learn more about some, the Center for Rural Affairs, please visit our website at CFRA.org. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the center. Uh, it was established in 1973 in Northeast Nebraska. It exists to build more vibrant rural communities. Uh, REAP, which is the program I work for, for the Center for Rural Affairs, started in 1990, and it has provided services to numerous micro and small businesses throughout Nebraska. Uh, the Center for Rural Affairs has a satellite office in Grand Island, which is where I'm housed at. Um, some of the work that the REAP uh, is doing, uh, we started uh, Industry-based academies. Um, this year, we started the restaurant. We started with the restaurant academy, the cleaning academy, um, financial literacy, uh, business startup, uh, and then we are focusing on that sec on those sectors. Uh, we did launch our virtual academies also once COVID hit. Uh, we did the restaurant academy, cleaning academy, and then here pretty soon we're going to be going with the childcare. Uh, also in that we started doing marketing, a marketing academy, uh, and pretty soon we're going to offer a variety of different classes, uh, so stay tuned for those. Um, our loan specialists are still helping small businesses, uh, business owners navigate through some of the disaster loans and other re resources that are still available for them. Um, the business development specialists are out uh, offering technical assistance to our clients who may be in need. Uh, we did hire two more new business development specialists. Uh, that are part of our team. Vicky Espinosa is one of them, who is a moderator for this live event. Uh, if you need a loan, we do have express loans. You can visit cfra.org backslash, backslash loans. Um, again, my name is Raul Arcos Hawkins, Business Development Specialist in the Grand Island office. So today, what are we talking about? We are talking about the cottage law and how you can apply it. Uh, LB 304, more commonly known or referred to as the Cottage Law, was amended by the, in the Nebraska Pure Food Act in September of 2019 and administered by the Department of Agriculture. 
It was introduced by Senator Crawford and it was signed into, into law by the governor on May 1st, uh, 2019. What does this mean? In a nutshell, any person may prepare and sell food that is not, that's the key word, not time and temperature controlled food, uh, safety food directly to a consumer at a public event other than a farmer's market. Uh, if you would like to know more information, uh, you can follow the link. Uh, the UNL extension does have a very nifty uh, page that you can look at that has all the information concerning the cottage law uh, that you can find more information. Um, and you can find that, uh, we're gonna put that in the chat so you can uh, click on the link. Uh, but what is time and temperature control food safety? It refers to any food that requires uh, time and temperature control for safety uh, to limit uh, pathogens and microorganisms to grow and toxin uh, to form. So basically, any food that needs to be controlled by uh, time and temperature, so if it has to stay hot or it has to stay cold for a certain amount of time, or be held at a certain amount of temperature, either hot or cold, um, that is not included in the cottage law. Uh, some of the time and temperature uh, controls for safety include uh, an animal food that is raw or it has to be heated, uh, in order to be uh, servable. Um, any plant food that is heated, heat treated, or consists of raw seeds, sprouts, uh, cut melons, cut leafy greens, cut tomatoes, or any mixture of cut tomatoes that are not modified in a way so they're unable to, that they're un unable to support uh, pathogens or microorganisms to grow or toxin to form. Um, any garlic oil mixtures that are not modified, uh, same way that it doesn't allow microorganisms to grow or uh, toxic toxins to form those are the the what time and temperature control so at, if at any point in time uh say that the food needs to be heated or it needs to stay warm that cannot be that is not uh, part of the food that is allowed to be sold under the cottage law or any oils specifically that are not modified uh, to keep um, any microorganism or, or pathogens to grow uh, if you would like more information about time and temperature uh, control safety foods, you can visit the website for the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. Uh, the website is on the link, um, is on the chat box, so please, if you would like to know more information about that, you can head to that website. What are some of the examples uh, that the cottage law applies to are baked goods with no fillings or toppings that require refrigeration for food safety, which includes bagels, biscuits, breads, brownies, cakes, cones, both waffle and sugar, cookies, donuts, muffins, pastries, pies without dairy-filled uh, base filling, uh, rolls, scones, sweetbreads, and tortillas, uh, candies uh, like baked candy, brittles, candies such as toffee, caramels, and hard candies, chocolate, cotton candy, and fudge, condiments such as oil, honey, honey without garlic or mixed herbs, syrups, and vinegars, including those to flavor the produce or herbs, uh, dry goods that include, include cereals, dry roasted coffee beans, dried fruit, dry herbs, uh, dry baking or soup mixes, dry pasta, spices, seasonings, and dry tea leaves, preserved foods such as, such as jams, jellies, and marmalades, except for pepper varieties, um, unless the pH lab testing shows that the product is below 4.2, uh, snacks such as caramel corn, chocolate covered goods such as nuts and pretzels, crackers, pretzels, fruit leathers, granola, kettle corn, nuts, seeds, and popcorn, and popcorn balls. Um, some of the foods that are prohibited under the cottage law are perishable baked goods that require refrigeration. Uh, I know that there's a lot of tasty treats out there that unfortunately the cottage law does not uh, cover, uh, such as a tres leches cake is not covered under the cottage law, unfortunately. Uh, vinegars and feast with chemicals or preservatives, and then low acid uh, and some sugar-based uh, uh, foods. So what do you need in order to uh, some of the requirements to comply with the cottage law? Uh, first, uh, the producer must be registered with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. You can go online. Uh, we'll put the, uh, the link where you can go online and register. It is a simple form. You just have to provide your information. Um, where the where the food is made, and then uh, you will be registered with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. Uh, second, the consumer must be visibly notified that the food was prepared in the kitchen that is not subject to regulation or inspection, and that the food may contain allergens. What does this mean? 
It means that it was made in a non-licensed, non-commercial kitchen, and it hasn't been inspected by the proper health inspector. Uh, Cross-contamination may have occurred, and goods and products may contain allergens. Uh, suggestion uh, is to print a label, uh, place on goods and products, and or a visible sign. Say that you're at a craft show or at a fair, and you have a table or at the farmer's market and you're selling some of this. Uh, if you have a visible sign also that says that the food that the food was prepared in a kitchen that is not subject to regulation or inspection, and that the food may contain allergens, uh, that is a visible mark that you are notifying the customer. Uh, third, uh, the name and address of the producer on the package of the label. Uh, again, my, our suggestion is, is you print out a label, place it on the packaging of the product or the goods. I would also include the telephone number uh, just in case somebody wants to reach out to you and get more product uh, or buy more product from you. Uh, number four, uh, the food is delivered in person or by direct delivery by the actual consumer. It cannot, the food cannot be sold at wholesale. So customers can pick it up and it can be delivered to the customers directly. Uh, goods, products cannot be sold at stores, restaurants, or any wholesaler. And I have some more information. This is coming from uh, the UNL, UNL extension. Uh, you guys can look at this information that is available for you. Um, like I said, you can go to their, their page and it has more information um, about the cottage law of where. So if you're if you're trying to like sell some of the product, you can go to farmers market, public events, like, like I said, fairs and festivals. Uh, you can do it at home. You can do it. You can sell them online or order by mail as long as it is being picked up or delivered within the state. So you can do online sales for the cottage lot as long it is that is kept within state boundaries and you can mail it. And again, it does have to have that uh, visible uh, label that says that the food was prepared in a kitchen that is not subject to regulation or inspection by any state regulatory uh, authority and it contains allergens. Again, uh, with the cottage law, you are prohibited to sell food to restaurants, retail stores, uh, roadside stands, catering, wholesale, or any interstate sales of any kind. So just keep that in mind. Uh, number five, uh, the producer comply with food safety guidelines that are required by county, uh, city, or village for the sale of public, public events. Uh, our suggestion, like always, is talk to your local health inspector. Uh, if you want to find out... Uh, who your local health inspector, uh, we're going to put that in the chat uh, when you can go to the Nebraska Department of Agriculture page and in there, there is a map. Uh, if you follow the link, you will find the map to your local health inspector. Number six, uh, the producer has to complete an accredited food cor safety course. Uh, suggestion again is to take a food handler's permit class that is usually provided by the local health inspector. Uh, that is a good way to uh, learn a little bit more about how to handle food, uh, cross-contamination, so then that way you become more aware of how to maintain the food properly safe. Uh, uh, number seven, and if you'd like to know more about uh, food safety, uh, you can always visit also the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, uh, food safety, and we will also put the link in uh, the chat box so you can find this information. Uh, Number seven, if the producer is uh, using private well water, the well water must be tested for nitrates and bacteria. Um, again, like I said, just making sure that we're keeping the, our customers safe and the consumers safe at the same time. Uh, number eight, for sales at a, at a farmer's market, producer is not required to register with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, but it is required to complete the food and not required to complete the food safety course. Uh, however, the producer is required to comply with regulations two through five and number seven. So again, if you're selling at a uh, farmer's market, uh, you have to comply with uh, labeling the product, saying that it was not prepared in a kitchen that is subject to regulation, that is not subject to regulation or inspection, and that the food may contain allergens. Uh, name and address of the producer on the packaging or the label. Um, number four, that the food has to be delivered directly to the consumer. Um, either in person or uh, directly delivered. Number five, the consumer complies with food safety requirements or the guidelines, and that if you're using pri uh, private well water, that the well water must be tested for nitrates and bacteria. So if you're selling at a farmer's market, you just have to follow those. But if you're selling in other places uh, than just a farm market, you have to follow all the regulations that are on here that are stipulated. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we will look 
and see uh, if there's any questions on uh, before I can continue. Um, is there any questions that we have? Uh, I will answer them. Tell people to join so that way we can get started. Uh, we are going to continue. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any questions. Like I said, if you have any questions, concerns, um, you can do visit the uh, website also with the Nebraska, um, UNL, UN Nebraska UNL. Uh, there is more information. But how does this apply to me? Maybe you have a hobby and you like to bake uh, and you would like to earn, earn a little cash. I know right now with the situation that we have with COVID, there's uh, people who are unemployed or have been furloughed and need that extra income, this is a great way to turn that hobby into a small business. Um, it's also a great opportunity for anybody who would like to explore the possibility of having the small business. Um, so what can you do? Like I said, you can sell directly to the consumers for pickup or delivery. You can sell at a farmer's market, at a public event, set as a city, uh, city-wide garage sales, uh, local festival, craft shows, fairs. Uh, just remember that if the product needs to be controlled by time and temperature, the food or the product are not covered under the cottage law. Again, examples are cakes that need refrigeration, such as dress leches, Cool Whip, uh, cream pies. Um, to just remember that, that if it's perishable and that needs refrigeration, those are not covered by the cottage law, uh, such as vinegars infused with chemicals and preservatives, low acid and some low sugar canned goods. So just remember that with the cottage law, um, you can sell anything that doesn't need to be controlled by time and temperature. If, if there's any questions, please drop them in the, in the chat box and we will answer them as we go. Um, the Cottage Law is a great jumpstart to a small business uh, venture, uh, turning the hobby into extra income. So remember the, uh, these important things. Um, food must not, must not, must be, you know, must not be time and temperature controlled. It should be shelf stable. Uh, packaging must include the name of the producer, address, contact information, and the disclaimer that says that the food was prepared in the kitchen that is not subject to regulation or inspection, and that the food may contain allergens. And that's key uh, to the cottage law. Uh, follow health code guidelines and take food, a food ha uh, handler's class um, and get the food permit, the food handler's permit. Uh, if you're using private well water, it must be tested for nitrates and bacteria. And obviously, uh, register with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture that you are uh, utilizing the cottage law to sell some of the product that you're selling. And remember, you can sell online, um, but as long as it stays within the state. It cannot uh, travel outside the state. Uh, and just remember that, that, that there has to be a label um, that says that the food was prepared in the kitchen that is not subject to regulation or inspection and that the food may contain allergens. Those are key. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact your local health inspector. Uh, the map, you can find the link in the, in the comments uh, where your health inspector is and the, uh, the phone number for your local health inspector is in there. Like I said, if you have any questions, you can always contact them uh, or you can contact me, uh, Raul AH at CFRA.org or by calling my cell phone number at 308-833-0258. Um, you can follow uh, the Center for Rural Affairs on our social media. We are here on Facebook and on Twitter at CFRA, on Instagram at Rural Nerd, and on LinkedIn. Uh, we are continually sharing resources that we develop to promote events that we are hosting. Uh, you can also visit our website at CFRA.org. Uh, I'm open to questions if there is any uh, about what the cottage law can do for you or how, can apply, how you can apply it or how can you can take advantage of it uh, to kickstart maybe a small business. Uh, maybe you have a hobby that you would like to turn into. Uh, maybe you love baking and you want to take that passion for baking and turn it into a small business uh, where you can gain some money or extra income. Um, again, we're going to stay on for a little bit. If you have any questions, we will more than gladly answer them. And again, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We did talk about the cottage law. We are going to have this chat uh, or this conversation uh, at 1230 in Spanish 
for anybody who would like to join us at that time. Um, thank you again for joining us. Uh, you can see this uh, rule report on the replay, uh, or you can share it, uh, so that way we can get more people to understand what the cottage law is. Again, if you have any questions, please submit your questions in the chat box and we will answer them. Uh, there is resources in that chat box um, where, where to register with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, uh, your local health inspector, food safety guidelines concerning uh, time and temperature. So if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Again, thank you for joining us. We are signing off. Um, and I will see everybody else at 1230 when we do the Spanish broadcast of this same topic. Thank you. Have a great day.